This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. Employees are immensely valuable assets for a company. If you don't have the right employees, you will find it difficult to manufacture the correct goods or provide the services to the standard that customers expect. However, these assets, these human assets, uh, are they're the only assets of the company which every evening leave and which may not come back or which may decide to relocate themselves to a competitor. Managing human resources is extremely difficult. You need to attract the right people, you need to keep them, uh, you need to motivate them, you need to inspire them uh, to work well. And if we're dealing with a, a paper here called Advanced Performance Management, one of the ways in which we need to manage performance is to manage our employees, because at some point uh, it is the employees uh, who are the determinants of how good the performance is. So when we're looking at reward practices, we are seeing how rewards, basically remuneration, salary, benefits and so on, uh, are important in the, uh, uh, the whole management of a, a company's performance. And rewards can be divided into three types. There's basic pay, there are performance related rewards, and there are benefits. First of all, basic pay. Uh, the basic pay, by and large, has to be in line with that of competitors. It can fall much below what competitors are offering for certain skill levels, certain grades, and so on there. Uh, you may want to offer a little bit more to attract more people, to attract better people and so on. But by and large, there's a kind of going rate, so to speak, for certain levels of experience, certain types of job, uh, certain uh, types of qualification. They're often within bands, so people uh, with a certain qualification will have a salary band uh, that allows you to uh, manipulate, increase the salary a little bit. It, it's always quite good management practice if you can give a, a little bit of an increase at the end of each year, uh, at least by inflation and so on. But then if they want to go outside that salary band, they have to find some sort of promotion. But this is fairly kind of normal. And, and basic pay of itself doesn't really perhaps do very much about managing performance. It is a kind of starting place to have people working for you at all. Well, uh, performance uh, can be perhaps arguably better managed is looking at performance related rewards. Uh, uh, but basically what you're saying is if you perform in the proper way then you will be rewarded more and this will push people, it will manage people into, uh, the, we hope, uh, adopting the correct standards of performance. Types of performance related rewards is you give people a, a bonus, that's usually an end of year percentage of some sort, a commission, salesman typically gets commission, sales staff get commission based on either the number of units sold or the value sold. You can give people promotion, that is a form of performance related reward, you can give people share options. Uh, and a share option is where you say to somebody right, I will give you, because you've done well, I'll give you an option to buy a thousand shares at let's say five dollars each and you can exercise that option within the next three years. In other words you can pay the five dollars for a thousand shares within the next three years. Three years. This works well for listed companies. If the current share price was four dollars then you're not going to pay the option price of five dollars. 
But if over three years the company manages to push up its share price $4, $5, $6, $7, $7. if at the end of three years the share price is $7 and you have this option uh, allowing you to only have to pay $5, you go for it. You will pay $5 to get the shares because you could immediately sell them for $7. This type of uh, share option is often used uh, to try to, uh, uh, to get people to see the long term. Uh, and it may say even if you leave before the option period is up, you, you know, you're, you're not going to get these options. So it can be used to tie people to the company. It can be used to incentivize people uh, to attend to the share price, to get the share price up. Because for most investors, it is a share price which they want to see improving. That is how their wealth increases in their investment. So a great thing about this is, is that it is kind of makes directors, for example, with share options, it makes their ambitions, their performance kind of congruent with what the shareholders want, an increase in share price. You have to be careful that the options are challenging. There is no point in giving someone an option now to buy shares at $5 as the current share price it is already eight dollars. You immediately exercise the purchase price at five, sell at eight, uh, and if you're lucky, you have enough money to retire on. So you have to be careful about uh, directors perhaps manipulating their share option schemes, not being challenging enough, already knowing that they could just by doing very little extra already get above that option price. So if we're going for some sort of performance related reward, we have to think what, what are the performances that we want to encourage? It could be something, and, and then how are we going to measure it? It could be something fairly easy to identify and to measure and to define, like sales volume. Of course you want to increase sales volume, that is obviously a performance worth keeping an eye on and it's easy to measure. Uh, but sales performance is almost at the end of the, the series of transactions in, in providing a product. Uh, what about innovation, uh, inventing new products, keeping up to date, uh, giving products a facelift? All of that is going to be important in the longer run to keeping those products selling. And if you think that performance is important, you need to measure it, otherwise people will ignore it. There's the old saying uh, uh, that basically what you measure is what you get. If you don't measure something and then people take their eyes off it, uh, they will concentrate on doing well on what they know they're going to be judged on. And once you set the performance, you have to know how to measure it. So in, let's say, the hospitality industry, uh, you could argue that being cheerful, uh, being sociable with customers, uh, being friendly with customers in a restaurant, for example, is important. Making you feel welcome is important. Uh, uh, but how are you going to measure that? Not quite so easy now as it was with sales volume. Uh, how are you going to measure the, the, the quality, if you like, of the interaction uh, between uh, a waiter, waitress and a customer. But you have to measure it. You also have to decide, uh, is the performance which we're getting, which we think is important which we're getting, uh, how much of it is an individual effort and how much of it is a team effort? Very much in designing a new product is going to be a team effort. Uh, in providing a successful team at a hotel, or providing uh, a, a meal in a, a good restaurant is a team effort of all the people involved, uh, not just the, the top dog, if, if you like. And uh, it, it, 
if it's team effort then it's probably we have to find some way of measuring the team effort and rewarding the team uh, and then of course ultimately how we are going to maybe split this performance split the bonus split the uh, the share options whatever you like how they, we're going to link that with the increased rewards and how we're going to spread it amongst the team so uh, we measure the performance but then we have to say okay for that increase in performance you get this increase in pay uh, it's not easy it's not easy even necessarily measuring the performance and then to say right for that increased performance uh, you know we're going to increase your pay by five percent ten percent twenty percent whatever it's going to be there's a lot of uh, kind of ifs and buts in performance related rewards uh, we'll see a little bit more in the next slide about some of the things you need to look at but you need to be careful uh, that it doesn't do harm that it doesn't cause resentment in some way because people feel it's unfair that they have done well they have tried hard they have been successful yet that effort has not been recognized that is not a way in which you're going to retain good staff the final part of uh, the rewards package is benefits. Benefits could be giving people medical insurance, could be giving people life insurance, could be giving people uh, a company car, could be providing childcare for either free or reduced uh, costs and so on. It could be providing a subsidised canteen and, and so on. Some of these, again, you'll be looking at what your competitors are doing but sometimes it can be particularly innovative. If you're finding it hard to recruit people, it may be because they have got uh, responsibilities in looking after young children, and it could be very, very cost effective if you were to be imaginative enough to uh, offer some sort of flexible working, some sort of subsidized childcare to so people who would otherwise have to be staying at home and looking after their children. Uh, could uh, join the workforce and be completely fulfilled there. The Fitzgerald and Moon's building blocks, uh, which we, we cover again actually when we're looking at non-financial non performance measures, just worth uh, mentioning here. Uh, we're saying when we, we say we have to decide what performance is, is important, it does give a, 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 a list of dimensions as it calls it of areas where you may need to look obviously financial performance is, is kind of the apex of this it's what all profit seeking businesses are aiming for but to get there we need to be good in our competitive performance good products well made innovative at competitive prices we need quality we need to ensure that the quality of the goods we're selling or the services we're providing is high because if it isn't we're not going to sell very many. We need to show in many industries flexibility that we can quickly react to uh, an order coming in from a customer. That's what that customer treasures, values, that's what we have to measure, provide and measure could be resource utilization, a type of efficiency. Our resources may be quite important if we are paying uh, qualified accountants, qualified lawyers, uh, consultants in the hospital. But we have to make sure that their time is used efficiently uh, and that they're not you know, spending too long having nothing to do yet being paid high salaries. And innovation again. We might be doing well now, but we'll not be doing well in three or four years' time if we don't keep up to date, both with production technology, advertising technology, marketing technology, production technology, and, and the products themselves which you are providing. We will be setting key performance indicators. That is a way in which you measure the performance and it's important that uh, the people, our employees, ultimately feel ownership 
of that, that they can affect it. Uh, if they don't feel they can change or affect performance, they're going to feel resentment if measurements are made of that performance and in particular if their rewards are in some way adversely affected by a performance measure they can't affect. It has, has to be seen to be achievable. If something is you know, way out of reach, why would you even try? And it has to be seen to be fair that your performance is noted fairly and is taken account of fairly. If something is outside your control, maybe there's been a strike, maybe COVID suddenly comes in, to what extent should uh, performance-related pay have been affected by COVID and perhaps your business closing down for several months? It's not your fault, but nevertheless, the business hadn't made the profits. It's certainly something which has to be sensitively handled. And the rewards must be clear. Uh, you must know how they were awarded, uh, how you managed to get a, a bonus of, let's say, $2,000. Why wasn't it $5,000? My colleague got five. Why have I only got two? We need to be able to, to, to see how it was calculated. Otherwise, you begin to think it's unfair. It has to provide motivation. It has to be something that you want. And again, it has to be controllable. Uh, you have to feel that my effort will translate into a reward in a transparent way. Certain problems can arise with the performance management systems, and this is a list which is uh, presented uh, really in your, your notes here. Misrepresentation, some of them overlap a little bit, but, but misrepresentation is basically where people fiddle, they lie, uh, they uh, include maybe sales in a period which shouldn't be included in that period uh, to get their bonus up because maybe the bonus is really very valuable. Gaming. Uh, gaming can come in, let's say we had two divisions and there is a prize, a bonus for the division which does better. Gaming can be uh, maybe destroying the chances of the other division, not passing on information in some way, trying to steal their customers. Uh, some, some sort of unfairness is implied by gaming. Misinterpretation. We don't properly understand what sort of behaviour is required. And again, maybe in banking this came up. Uh, people certainly, uh, I think there's good evidence that uh, many banks uh, lost sight of a uh, kind of ethical relationship that you would expect to see in banks. Uh, there have been scandals in setting LIBOR, there have been scandals in setting foreign exchange rates and so on, uh, so, so that basically the banks were bound to win. The banks kind of sold you a product, uh, but the banks were bound to win because of the way the product would uh, pay off. Short-termism we've mentioned, uh, again, results are easier to manipulate in short, short term, and it may be the long-term behaviour which is really important in a company. Measurement uh, fixation is uh, really well. Me measurement fi fixation uh, is and tunnel vision uh, nearly the same thing. Okay, so measurement fixation is where all you do is keep the same old measures whether or not they are still relevant or not. Tunnel vision is you just look at what's measured, this great statement, what you measure you change, and you stick to, to, to hitting these targets that you've been set, and it doesn't matter what awful performance is going on around the place. You need a well-constructed raft, really, of KPIs so that the organization behaves well on a whole number of different fronts. Sub-optimization. Uh, this is uh, where the bonus scheme or the reward scheme uh, uh, enables people, really, to stop effort after a certain time. 
you 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 know if you're given a a sales budget of a hundred thousand units, once you get to the hundred thousand units, maybe at the end of October, uh, why would you bother trying to sell more units in November and December if your bonus isn't going to go up at all? So sub optimization is uh, achieving output, achieving uh, uh, targets which are good enough but they might not be the best targets or the best achievements that can possibly be achieved if you kept trying. And ossification. Ossification is a sort of measurement fixation again. It's where the performance scheme gets tired, old, a bit irrelevant, yet, yet it, it, it's there. It's always been there and we're going to keep it there. We're not going to change it. If something ossifies, it means it turns to bone. It's not flexible. 